Titanosaurs are the biggest animals to ever live on land. Some almost challenge the largest whales in length for largest animals ever. They are also technically known from every continent besides Antarctica, though that may eventually turn out not to be true too. The epicenter for titanosaurs at the end of the Mesozoic was South America, and Brazil specifically also had its fair share. Let's take a look at one of them. Let's meet Ostroposeidon. Yewelin Ivor Price was one of the first Brazilian paleontologists. His work contributed not only to the development of Brazilian but also to global paleontology. He was active from the early 1920s until he died of a heart attack in 1980, though he had been doing paleontological work up till that point as well. One of his many discoveries was a very fragmentary jumble of giant bones found at the outskirts of the Presidente Prudente City, southwestern São Paulo State, Brazil, in the 1950s. Price and a team from the Museo de Ciencias da Terra went out there to excavate the bones, which was carried out in 1953. Once those bones were excavated, prepared, and delivered to the museum's collections, they sat there for the next 60 plus years. The bones, which consists of two incomplete neck vertebrae, one neck rib, one back vertebra, seven fragments of back vertebrae, and a fragment of a hip vertebra, eventually got their due in 2016 with the combined work of Camila Bandera, Felipe Simbras, Elaine Machado, Diogenes de Almeida Campos, Gustavo Oliviera, and Alexander Kellner in their paper that was published in PLUS ONE. The bones themselves were more specifically excavated from Raposa Tavares Road, close to the Assis Chateaubriand Road, from a layer of rock known as the Presidente Prudente Formation, which is a part of the Bauru group of the large Bauru Basin, known for its titanosaurian sauropod dinosaurs and terrestrial crocodile relatives. This layer of rock is considered to date between the Campanian and Maastrichtian ages of the latest Cretaceous period, 70-ish million years ago or so. The rocks of this area consist of sandstones and mudstones, and probably would have been something of a floodplain, hence the prominence of fossils preserved. One of the authors of this research, Felipe Simbras, attempted to relocate the exact excavation site of the giant fragmentary specimen, but was unable to because the general area had been urbanized, destroying any semblance of a dig site or outcrop. The few bones of this enormous specimen show that the animal was a titanosaurian sauropod dinosaur of the lithostrotian group. Once all of the minute details of the traits of the bones were described and tallied up, the research team decided to name the animal Ostroposeidon magnificus, the magnificent southern Poseidon. The use of Poseidon here is in reference to the god's ability to control earthquakes rather than the better known control of the sea. Despite the specimen only consisting of a handful of outwardly boring and generic spine bones, several traits preserved in those bones show that the animal was a titanosaur. For example, the hyposphene hypantrum articulations are missing from the vertebrae, and the neck and back vertebrae do not have forked neural spines. The researchers also sent some of the bones through a CT scanner to get an idea of what the inside of the bones looked like. This can help identify what type of animal it is they are looking at. With the CT scans, the team found that Ostroposeidon had an internal bone texture that's called camelate, punctuated by many small air chambers. This is a feature of titanosaurs. Despite the fragmentary nature of the animal, the researchers were still able to estimate a size based on mathematical formulas used to determine length in modern animals and based on the sizes of relatives with more complete remains. Let's bring in Mr. Man from Animal Planet's The Most Extreme. To get a good visual on just how massive this titan was, Ostroposeidon is estimated to have been about 25 meters, 82 feet in length when it was alive. A titanosaur of this size could range from 50 to over 100 tons, depending on the methods you use to estimate mass. A heavy beast for sure. Thanks, Mr. Man. All elements from this specimen have been altered to some degree due to taphonomy, the study of how organisms decay and become fossilized or preserved in the paleontological record. 
The vertical axis of the bones tends to be twisted and compressed, and the material shows some taphonomic fractures. The cortical bone of several elements was partially lost, showing the internal camellae. The fragmentary nature of the material suggests that at least some breakages are the result of weathering, indicating geologically recent exposure, while others might have been caused by the collecting process. It is possible that more remains of this specimen were left at the outcrops, but since the outcrop could not be found and since the area is now urbanized, the hypothetical rest of this animal may not ever be found. Due to the anatomical features, size, and collecting data, the team agreed that all vertebral elements represent the same individual. Based on the features of the growth rings within the bones, and based on information of the growth stages of other titanosaurian sauropod dinosaurs, the team was also able to prove that this specimen was mature when it died, as there is no evidence of immaturity. The specimen is preserved in fine sandstone with cross-lamination, indicating that it was deposited in a low-energy flow regime, likely a crevasse splay of a floodplain. Ostroposite was not alone when it was alive. The Presidente Prudente Formation, the layer of rock in which the bones were found, has also revealed the presence of two other titanosaurs, Brasilotitan Nemophagus and Gondwanatitan Faustoi, both small-sized and considered advanced members of this group of sauropods. Ostroposite differs from them mainly by the anatomical traits of the neck bones, which are proportionally shorter and bear taller neural spines. Remember what I said earlier about the researchers tallying up all the anatomical traits of the bones to use to determine what type of dinosaur it is? A lot of folks don't understand phylogenetics or taxonomy. I don't, nor do I think anyone fully understands it all. It's difficult, complex, and may actually be physically impossible to fully understand due to all those traits used in computers. The cool thing is, we don't all need to, but I believe I and other science communicators should push that phylogenetics isn't frivolous and no one is determining different groups of animals based on just a list of five differing traits. Scientists used phylogenetic software after tallying up a bunch of different quantifiable traits found in bones, soft tissue, general morphology, and DNA, if applicable. They do this because it's easier to turn all that into numerical data and have the computer sort it out. The answers it gives are best approximations, not definitive answers or relationships as far as I know. So, for a completely unrelated example, when someone asks why a therapsid like Inostrancevia is not a mammal, the simple answer is, because it's not a mammal? That's a good enough answer because the real answer would be to list off who knows how many traits it has that mammals don't have and vice versa. That sort of data list could be hundreds of traits long. You can probably find that data on your own, but I, I ain't trying to understand that. Which is why I usually just default to, eh, they're probably right about taxonomy here. Unless there is some obvious or bizarre reason to second guess as a non-expert enthusiast or beginner scientist, whatever you may be. I'm such not an expert in phylogenetics that I almost certainly got something objectively wrong here, but this is how I understand the psychom of it. In basic bio, taxonomy can be taught as a handy list of big general traits that groups have that define them, but these traits are not the only ones and are the least subtle ones in order to teach kids the basic idea of how we classify critters. Like how mammals are defined by milk glands, hair, upright limbs, and warm blood, despite other groups of non-mammals and true mammals having or not having some of these traits. So, for Ostroposeidon, in order to establish its phylogenetic position amongst the greater Titanosauria, the researchers performed a cladistic analysis using mainly the dataset published by Gonzalez Riga and Ortiz David. They included five new characters and 15 additional taxa, plus Ostroposeidon magnificus. One character was modified due to repetition and one excluded for being non-informative. A character is a single trait, as I have been referring to it. This can be something like the presence or absence of little tooth-like serrations on the tooth, which are called carinae, or it can be more specific, like the specific types of carinae in the tooth or the space between them. The newer analysis by the Ostroposeidon team had the largest number of titanosaurian species used in a phylogenetic analysis up till that point. 
The analysis specifically found that Ostroposidon forms a clade with the Lonchosauria clade, which itself contains Mendosasaurus and Futolonchosaurus for this paper's analysis, but also includes Argentinosaurus, Drusillosaurus, Notocolossus, Patagotitan, and Puertasaurus, depending on which analysis you consult anyway. So, what did it look like? Well, that is an unfortunately hard question to answer, and one that the team behind the award-winning Prehistoric Planet series had to. They decided to have a section of the forest episode of Season 1 take place in a Cretaceous Brazilian forest to show how herds of giant sauropods may have affected the growth of forests. The team behind this project decided to play it safe and reconstruct Ostroposidon like its close relatives, the Lonchosaurians. This is entirely speculative, but considering how conservative sauropods tend to be in their body plans, it's actually not against the evidence to have an Ostroposidon with the usual wide-framed ribcage, pillar-like legs, long tail, long neck, upswept and slanted neutral body pose, and a skull that is tall near the eyes and low near the wide-rounded snout, a la Patagotitan, Dreadnoughtus, and others. The description of this new species, Ostroposidon magnificus, increases the knowledge of Brazilian titanosaurs, particularly the giant ones, which are not often reported from Brazil. Despite the fragmentary condition of the new species, a phylogenetic analysis shows that Ostroposidon is the sister group of Lonchosauria, a clade that comprises other giant titanosaurs. CT scan analysis reveals some new information about internal anatomic features of large titanosaurs, including potential growth patterns. Some of those internal structures were observed for the first time and reinforced the importance of the CT scan studies in those giant dinosaurs. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.